you might have a whole plan for your day. You might know when you're taking lunch that day, when you're clocking out that day. But if something happens on your case, you're done. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be talking about my experience with child welfare. And I'm using this voice because it can be a really triggering topic, okay? So I'm trying to use a nice, calm voice. <laughs> Just kidding. But today I am going to be talking about my experience with child welfare. I mean, where do I start? So it definitely was very stressful. You have a lot of responsibility with worrying about child safety and needing to always make sure when you're having conversations with, with people, you're recognizing the safety aspects. When you are at the home visits, you're making sure that things are safe for the kids. So I felt a lot of responsibility at that job and it was kind of like more than I thought more than more than i knew i was signing up for i mean honestly the training is not there for me like straight out of college i mean yes we have some kind of knowledge when it comes to school and needing to be prepared for that kind of job but not when it comes to the actual job like i need training just for that not just for the certification the training needs to be a lot more it needs to be a lot more centered on what the job entails it's not something that people can just get on the job training but that's essentially what happened like you go on the floor and it's like okay here are your cases uh well we did quite cover this i don't think we we quite touched on this today so um how do i do this how do i do my job somebody's gonna call you out and be like hey i know you don't know how to do your job and i don't have respect for you because of that and so i don't want to work with you or i'm not going to talk to you or i'm not going to let you know things like that's the issue with that kind of scenario is people can see through the newness and i definitely got called out because of my age i got called out because do i don't have kids and it was it was an experience and coming right out of school that being my first job i mean i feel like that's the best time to get people i guess because once people have had a little bit more experience in actual different human services social work type of jobs they're not as likely to put up with a lot of the stuff that comes with child welfare turnover is just horrendous i've seen a lot of people come and go and i remember when i first started and being a part of a team um one of my teammates was like oh yeah one of the people on the team they don't get to know people's name because you know they don't know if you're going to be here as the time went on and i seen how people were dropping like flies i said you're on to something pal you were on to something people literally would just leave their stuff on their desk their phone their laptop and that's how we knew that they were done they they weren't coming back <laughs> like people would just literally not show up and it'd just be like okay here you go we all gotta scramble and fit in it i mean it wasn't like it was one two times it was a numerous times people would just not come to work i think i never totally 100 percent felt comfortable in court and that was his own beast being prepared for court and they would try to prepare us with tools to help us get ready for court but then it's like i have to i have to in advance be able to keep track of my 
court days and then in advance do the documents needed for court and then in advance actually get ready for court so when i was on my way out i was just getting to the point where i was like getting into the groove of when i work on this document i'll go ahead and get the court document prepared at the same time and it didn't always work out something could happen on the week before when you're getting ready to start those and then it's just like you're thrown all off and that's another thing about child welfare is you might have a whole plan for your day you might know when you're taking lunch that day when you're clocking out that day but if something happens on your case you're done like your whole day is done like i i I've done 14 hour shifts. I've done 16 hour shifts. I've done, I put in my time. I, I honestly did. It was just like, if something went wrong in your day, it, it just kind of threw off your whole day. Sometimes it could throw off your whole week, depending on what the scenario is. The beauty about child welfare is that you do get the experience of impacting someone's life and really being able to help families in their time of need when they really do need to be restructured in their parenting, communication, relationships. And that is beautiful. The issue is how the system is set up. There are so many cases. There are so many things that you have to do. Like the amount of things that you're asked to do. There was one, I had one child and she was just like, you're my mom. And I was like, you're really, really smart for a little girl because essentially I am your mom. I'm picking you up, taking you to school, picking you up from school on top of having to do paperwork concerning you, find your family to be a match with, adopted with, go through that whole process. It's just the demands are the highest that they could be. And you're still expected to be prepared. You're still expected to be professional. You're still expected to be um, on time with all your documents. And is my name Superwoman? I didn't realize that my name had been changed to Superwoman. I don't have the outfit. I mean, nobody told me that I was going to be a superhero, just develop these mutant powers and be able to do it all in 24 hours. Like I felt so bad not being able to help my families 100% because I'm one person. I can't be 29 people and I can't give these cases 100% that they need in order for things to flow the way that they are supposed to flow. And I I just always felt bad about that. I felt guilty about that. And that's really my experience with child welfare is being stressed, being burnt out, trying to move on, feeling guilt because I know that these families weren't getting the best and it, it really was unfortunate. I mean, they do need people. They do need people on the front lines, but we also need people that are helping with the policies who are out in the community, making sure we have community resources and that support in that area and making sure we have support in general. We were at, when I left, I was about, I was around at 50 kids. It was over the max that it was supposed to be for cases. Um, so it was just a lot, you know, you, you, if you, if you don't know, you can imagine it being like, okay, you need to see your kids every 20, 25, 24 days, see them, link the parents with resources, monitor the parents progress with these resources, do your court documents. It was just a And honestly, if my dad hadn't passed away, I would probably still be there. And it's not because, you know, I, I don't know my worth and I shouldn't be able to take that. But it was honestly because I was connected with my kids. Like, 
you know, not all of them, 100%, you know, but I was connected to my kids and I wanted to do, I wanted to be there for them. I didn't want them to have to deal with somebody else coming and introducing them, getting used to the case, maybe not getting 100% integrated with the case, not knowing what's going on and things like that. And, you know, I was, I was making it work. If you want to learn a lot, you definitely can in that world and um they always need people so if you have any questions about child welfare or uh, my experience specifically with child welfare then leave it down in the comments below and i will i will respond thank you so much for watching watching this video and i'll get you in the next one bye